All right, y'all, so it's a rare occasion because uh, it's technically an early release day, so I'm home two hours earlier than usual. And my wife took the kids and she took them out of town, so I am home alone for at least the next five hours, I think. So I'm gonna cook up like six or seven beats. No, I'm Kevin, I'm about to jump on the PlayStation real quick. Hey, what up y'all, Mr. Cruz here, your friendly neighborhood producer back with another video. And in today's video, we're gonna be going over some of the new plugins that FL Studio added with their latest update. Now, if you know me, I came from Reason, um, where I kind of started out making beats and then switched over to FL. And one of the major reasons was because they offer free updates for life. I mean, when you get free updates for life, and you get dope plugins like this, it's just a win-win. All right, so um, for this, uh, we're gonna be going over the pitch shifter plugin that they recently added, the pitch shifter effect. But specifically, I'm gonna be focusing on the music one uh, just because uh, the, the voice algorithm, I don't have a voice, uh, I don't have a beat that has a voice in it, so next time I'll check that one out. But if you're interested, still check this video out because a lot of the parameters that I'm gonna be going over and a lot of the features are also relevant to what they have for the voice component of the pitch shifter. Okay, so for starters, let's go ahead and take a listen to the beat without the pitch shifter um, effect added. We're gonna solo this because I really just wanna focus on the instrument. So we're gonna listen to this part of the beat. Just that instrument, that little plucking sound. Before we actually get started, let's uh, go over some of the parameters that we have here. So what pitch shifter is, is it is a grain looper. Pretty much it takes your audio signal or whatever signal is coming into pitch shifter. It chops it up into little slivers or grains is what they're called. Um, and then it allows these parameters to affect the pattern of those grains. What a granular synthesis does is it takes a portion of an audio signal or a sample, and then it'll loop it over and over and over again to kind of get different effects. So with this one, uh, we'll go over some of the parameters that it has here. So here is pretty much your grid. So if you right click anywhere in this grid, it'll kind of, it works in tandem or relative to the faders that we have here between pitch and duration. Um, so again, that's if you right click, you can right click and drag it, but if you right click anywhere in the grid, it'll straight jump to it. If you left click, it'll drag it from wherever it is and it'll allow you to move it. So if I have it over there in the corner and I click over here, I'm still only moving it from that corner. So this allows you to get a little bit more finite movements or finite tuning versus um, right clicking anywhere. And you can also change it down here. Uh, so kind of, for example, if you wanna turn it off, if you don't wanna have this kind of uh, going, but all this is, is it's just a visualizer for you to be able to see what the audio signal is doing. Uh, you can also change the speed. I kind of changed my speed to fast. I'm gonna set it to medium. Uh, and then you can also select it as monochrome if you kind of don't really wanna see all the colors. All right, let's go ahead and set that back to normal. And then let's enable this so we can kind of see it because I think it's kind of cool to be able to see all that stuff. Uh, let's change the speed to slow. Ah, let's change it to fast. That's too fast. All right, let's go back to medium. All right, so pitch. Pitch is kind of self-explanatory, but you can move one octave up or one octave down. Um, if you just scroll or if you drag it, it'll allow you to move um, in semitones, but also, I guess, sense, uh, if that that's what that would be. But if you hold Alt, I believe, and you move it up, it'll allow you, or if you scroll up, it'll allow you to move in full semitones so that you're not kind of messing stuff up going in between if you're not really wanting to do that. If you're not wanting to go in between the semitones, uh, hold Shift and it'll move it in full semitones. So you can go up all the way to plus 12 or you can go down all the way to negative 12. So you have a full octave range Technically two octaves that you can go. You can go up an octave or down an octave. Uh, I'm gonna keep it in the middle here for now. And then the duration. So the duration affects, again, how we talked about those little grains. The duration affects the how long it's gonna take to go from one grain to the other. And again, that's at full duration. So if you, if you go down, you'll kind of start to hear those like, um, grains kind of not being bypassed and it kind of starts to sound a little staticky sort of. I like the way it sounds with like the kind of tremolo 
old vinyl kind of sounding effect and, and i'm going to keep the pitch the same because i kind of don't want to mess up the rest of this beat all right so next down here we have jitter and random i'm going to set these to zero uh and then you also have density and what density does is density um takes the grains and it'll either overlap them or it'll kind of like space them a little bit further apart i don't know how i'm not entirely sure how it works i just know that like at, at a certain point with the density the density is going to overlap those grains and you get like this really weird alien drone sort of effect um but if it's set to default right there at 300 that is where you get the tremolo effect that it, it starts really becoming noticeable that's kind of what i like to hear uh though so let's take a listen to it there at just that default and then i'll go back and forth between uh going down and going up All right, never mind. It's when you go down to 100 is when you get the tremolo. And you can kind of notice it. You can literally see it here. All right, so let's crank it all the way up. Dang, that got louder. So I'm guessing like, right, we notice that it's louder because those grains are like stacked on top of each other. So that kind of boosts the audio signal. But I really like the sound that it gets right here. Down here at the bottom, we have jitter and random. And all that does is that adds uh, different kind of dropouts um, or, or randomness in like the, the, the pitch or the volume. So randomness, I'm not all that interested or not too sure about, but I do know that like with jitter, if you're trying to get that old school uh, lo-fi, um, very grainy, worn down tape effect, then you want to add a lot of jitter. And again, this, this adds those dropouts randomly. Random randomizes the start position of those grains that are being looped over and over again. So let's crank this up to 100 and see what happens. I'm hearing a slight difference. Um, I would probably just crank it all the way up and just like leave it how it is. And lastly, we have delay and feedback. I kind of probably shouldn't need to explain what like delay and feedback are. Um, so if you've been making beats for any amount of time or if you've been doing any kind of audio engineering, then delay and feedback are already familiar to you, but delay is just like an echo. Um, so this determines like if there's an echo or how much of an echo there is. Notice here at the top that it's changed to time signature, but by default, if you click this T down here, uh, well, it's changed, it changes to, um, to time time base versus tempo base. So I changed it to tempo base just because I, if I see the numbers, I know exactly what is, what's gonna happen. And then increasing this increases the amount of grains that are fed back into the delay. And so you kind of get that little feedback of effect. And then down here we have uh, where you can turn it, the, the delay off, post, pre, or no shift. No shift, I'm not too sure what no shift really means but in the the manual just kind of said something about like if it has something to do with the feedback uh and then you have your mix knob so now let's play around with this and see if we can get our synth which sounds like this to sound even cooler so let's go ahead and start Oh, I like that right there. So kind of like a little bit of bringing down the mix knob. Um, yeah, I, I really like that right there. Let's hear it with the whole beat now. Well, that's what I got for you guys. If you guys feel like you learned something, make sure you hit that like button. Let me know what you guys think of the pitch shifter down in the comments below. Um, I think it's definitely a plugin that I'm gonna be adding to, um, to kind of like my chain whenever, especially whenever I'm cooking up loops or melodies. Make sure you guys check back with me later on because we are gonna check out the, uh, bam, the voice one.
And of course, whenever you guys are done cooking up those beats, make sure you head over to BeatStars, start uploading those beats and start selling them because you can turn your passion into a profit over at BeatStars because it is the number one platform for producers like you and me. If you're interested in joining me over on BeatStars, hit the link in the description below and make sure to use my code CRU230 and I'm going to hook you up with your first month of BeatStars completely for free. I'm going to take care of you. Outside of that, it's your boy, Mr. Cruz. Out.